Abolition, though, is not simply decarceration, put everybody out on the street. It is reorganizing how we live our lives together in the world. And this is something that people are doing in a variety of ways throughout the United States and around the planet already. It is not a pie-in-the-sky dream. It is actually something that is practical and achievable in the city of New York, in Texas, in South Africa, around the world. Well, could you talk about this uh, response from other in other parts of the world to the question of crime and punishment and uh, and why, obviously, we often talk about how the United States has such a disproportionate uh, percentage of the world's uh, prison population? Yes, it's kind of interesting, although it's probably just a coincidence, that the United States has about one in four prisoners in the world. It also has about one in four COVID deaths in the world. And although that might just be a coincidence, it does make me stop and think about how it is that we organize ourselves in the United States across the disparate and various polities that go from uh, the Atlantic to the Pacific and beyond. So in other parts of the world, what one sees is a very simple fact. Where life is precious, life is precious. In places where the state, the government, municipalities, social justice organizations, faith communities, labor unions work together to lift up human life, the incidence of crime and punishment, including the incidence of interpersonal harm, are less likely to occur. And this is in, co in places where uh, pol uh, populations are every bit as diverse as in the United States. We also see that in places where inequality is the deepest, the use of prison and punishment is the greatest. Nowhere, however, gets even close to the United States.